Though the Kimi Player channel is technically 10 years old, with the exception of a few isolated videos, I haven't actually started to create content frequently until 3 or 4 years ago. Since then, I'm proud to say that our community has grown a lot, with loads of people from all over the world dropping by to give their opinions, share their ideas or answer other viewers' questions. If you've been paying close attention to the comment section, you probably noticed that a few users are far more active than others, and our boy Saki Tsuzura is a good example. From time to time he suggests a topic for a video, but unlike most people, he seems to be quite persistent with his ideas, which is a good thing, because sometimes good ideas end up falling through the cracks. Well, today all his hard work has paid off, because it's finally time for us to look at some fighting game fencers. Obviously, this is not an exhaustive list. There are many other fencers out there, so if there's someone you're particularly bummed out about not making the cut, leave a comment below and if this video does well, maybe I'll revisit this topic later. Now, before we get into this list properly, I need to give at least a nod to Charlotte from Samurai Shodao. If not the first fencer, she certainly at least qualifies as one of the most notable ones during the golden era of fighting games in the early 90s, so Charlotte gets a special mention. But only a special mention, cause she already appeared in a previous video, Fighters based on Joan of Arc, so I'm not gonna go over her whole story again. I'll leave a link in the description so you can head there next if you're curious to know more about her. So, all set? Then let us begin with someone that comes from a rather unknown fighting game series, Claire from the Star Gladiator franchise. What Star Gladiator? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is a science fiction themed weapon based 3D fighting game series developed and released by Capcom for arcade and PlayStation in the mid 90s. The story takes place in the year 2348, with humans having been exploring the vast reaches of outer space for four centuries and having established peaceful contact with alien civilizations. After some problems arise with a couple of alien races, the Earth Federation, through a physicist called Dr. Edward Bilstein, starts developing a plasma-powered weapon to help protect the planet from outside threats. When it's discovered that Bilstein had experimented on human bodies during his research, he's immediately arrested and exiled from Earth, being imprisoned in a floating satellite that orbits the planet Zeta. Four years later, however, Word comes out that a small group of rebels calling themselves the Fourth Empire, led by Bustem, who had escaped and built himself a powerful cyborg body, attacked and destroyed an Earth Federation army base. When the attacks continue and it becomes clear that Bustem's ultimate goal is to conquer Earth and the rest of the universe, a panicked Earth Federation falls back to its last hope a project codenamed Star Gladiator, which consists in fighting people able to utilize plasma power in their own given accord, in an attempt to stop Bustin before the mad genius can succeed in his plan. As for Claire, she is a Spanish female fencer who fights with the plasma rapier, and first appear in the second, and so far last, game in the series, Plasma Sword Nightmare of Bustin. I really dig her design with some sort of futuristic medieval armor. Claire is a longtime friend of Geralt, working with him under Bustin. It's unclear why she had joined the Fourth Empire, but it is speculated that something tragic happened to her in the past and that she saw the Fourth Empire as a way of escaping her own inner pain and suffering. In battle, Claire is known as the Scarlet del Sol and is a master at fencing, using her precise fencing skills to mercilessly defeat her opponents. Upon hearing and learning about Garrow's revolt against Bilstein, Claire confronts him and demands an explanation, leading to an impromptu battle between the two fencers. Before Claire can make her final move against Garrow, Luca confronts them unexpectedly, under orders from Goro to eliminate Claire. When Luca explodes from a plasma energy overload due to the intensity of the struggle, Claire shields Garrow from the blast and dies in his arms. It is heavily implied from within Clara's last words that she may have developed feelings for him during their time together in the Fourth Empire, and that she had wanted to spend the rest of her life with him. Gameplay-wise, Claire is basically a clone of Geralt, sharing the same weaponry, attacks and plasma field, but with a different plasma strike, aka super move. You see, Capcom has pulled a battle K role here, inflating the roster by adding a mirror image of almost every fighter, although in a much more elegant way due to the mirror characters having their own unique designs and original stories. 
I wasn't able to find a solid, committed approved tier list for this game, but the little I did uncover seems to point out to Claire and Geralt being quite solid characters. Apparently they're easy to use, have pretty fast pokes, above average range on their attacks, and good mix-ups out of their Rekka-like specials. Maybe a little too much on the unknown side, but Claire is certainly a fighting game fencer to remember. I mean, come on, she uses a plasma raper for crying out loud. But if it's a familiar face you want, then look no further, cause our next character is a veteran from the Soul Calibur franchise, Raphael Sorrell. I guess we might as well give a special mention to Amy, who appeared in my Fighters from France video, since she is heavily featured in Raphael's storyline. But you have to check that video for more details later, cause now it's not about the student, but the master. As with all Soul Calibur characters, the release of the new game has put me in quite a pickle when it comes to covering the lore, since Soul Calibur 6 is a reboot of the series. I don't feel comfortable letting go of the old story yet, so I'll have to do this the hard way and make sure to tell you about Raphael in both universes. First appearing in Soul Calibur 2, the original Raphael is a fairly young man of French noble descent. His cool, unemotional demeanor created many enemies, but his quick and precise decision-making and execution skills solidified the foundations of his family among the nobles. Unfortunately, one day Raphael was cast out when he made a critical mistake. He killed another noble from a very prominent family during the Evil Seed incident. Despite having acted in self-defense, Raphael had no option but to flee town, being pursued by a group of soldiers that almost captured him, if not for Amy, a poor orphan who lived in the streets, that decided to hide Raphael from his enemies. This proved to be a life-changing experience, as Raphael was touched by Amy's act and decided to adopt her as his own daughter, wanting nothing more than to secure a meaningful future for her. Amy had become an irreplaceable presence and main motivation in Raphael's life. When he went after the legendary sword So Edge, Raphael got injured and affected by its evil aura, a curse that spread to Amy, who had nursed him back to health. With Amy transformed into a being that could not interact with the normal world, Raphael decided that he would change the world for her, going as far as to deliver it all to darkness if it meant that she would have a place to call home. New Timeline Raphael has a similar origin story, having fled after the evil seed caused a noble his sponsor to go mad and try to kill the king. He was also saved by Amy, who he adopted as his foster daughter and who became his whole world. This Raphael did not get infected by So Edge's evil energy, not yet at least, but he's still pretty much ruthless, having no quarrels about using others to accomplish his goals. He's utterly devoted to Amy, focusing on nothing more than creating a world in which she can be happy, regardless of the casualties his actions might cause. Raphael's fighting style predominantly accommodates thrusting and slashing attacks. He's a relatively fast character and many of his thrusting attacks either have an added guard impact effect or allow him to dodge incoming moves by sidestepping and ducking under his opponent's weapon. His kicks, while not providing the same dodge feature of his thrust attacks, are quite fast and Raphael has a reasonable number of low attacks in his arsenal, most of which deal moderate damage and are hard to guard on reaction. Mastering Raphael's evasive maneuvers make him a good mind game character, bested only by fighters actually meant for the job like Cervantes, Yoshimitsu and Voldo. He's not too effective when it comes to competitive play though, hanging around the lower part of the tier list more often than not. Well then, that's enough popular characters for now. Time to scrap the bottom of the barrel again and bring you someone only the strong one know. It's Biel Montario from Breakers. So first things first, what the hell is Breakers? The plot centers around a brutal fighting tournament that gives its last remaining participant an opportunity to face the organizer in a final challenge for the chance to win a massive prize money and the honor of truly becoming the strongest there is. What nobody knows is that the sponsor is actually an evil spirit who possessed the body of a man from Hong Kong and has established a selection system to amplify his dark powers. In fact, none of the martial artists who were chosen to challenge the champion in a private final match have ever come back alive. This rather obscure title was developed and published by Fiskoen in 1996. It takes a lot of, let's say, 
inspiration from other more popular franchises of the time, like the Street Fighter 2 series or Fate of Fury. The designs of many characters are based on their more famous counterparts, and they also tend to shamelessly steal moves from other well-known 2D fighters. Nearly two years later, an updated version, Breaker's Revenge, was released, putting minimal effort in terms of offering new content, like adding a single new character in a code to play with the final boss. It does feature a mostly solid gameplay though, enough to develop a cult following. You see, while Breakers is a copy of better games, it's a quite competent one, even adding a few innovations of its own. A curious one is that when both players choose the same character, the second player character will receive a different name, often taken from the prototype version of the game. Since the game's lore suggests that both the original character and the clone are in fact two different people, this is particularly important for us in this list, as we now suddenly are covering two fanciers instead of one. Speaking of which, let's see what I can tell you about them. First, there's Piel Montario, a nobleman who parades around in Zora-like fashion. Yeah, Piel, with two L's instead of, you know, Pierre, an actual French name. Not that he's French though, cause god forbid this character make any sense. Instead, Piel, who, by the way, in the prototype was called Pierre, is Italian, so, you know, there goes a good entry for a possible Fighters from Italy video. Piel's objective is to use his impressive fencing skills to confront and bring to justice Bai Hu, the mysterious organizer of the tournament. The extra character, Piel's outer ego, is George, a Frenchman who was once robbed during a trip to Italy and has harbored a rater for Italians ever since. Gameplay-wise, Piel sits at the bottom of the tier list. He actually has decent mix-up options, good damage when he hits, and a good breaker slash reversal in Thunder Riser. But he simply doesn't have good priority, lacks a good anti-air, and his specials, outside of Rekas, are just awful. So that's enough about Piel slash George. Time to give our boy Saki a little bit more of fan service by covering a character that he suggested himself. It's Ori Ballardise, a name that I probably butcher, from Undernight in Blurt. Before we go any further, I would like to warn you that Ori will be our only fencer from your typical 2D anime fighter. I know there's others, but I want to avoid having a list filled with similar looking games. So if you're upset that your favorite missed the cut, just leave your suggestion below and maybe one day I'll get a chance to revisit the topic. Now although this series is nowhere near as unknown as Breakers, why don't we take a moment to see what it's all about before we move into our feature character. The story takes place in a fictional modern day setting sometime in the 21st century. A phenomenon called the Hollow Knight has been developing particular regions of Japan once a month for several centuries. Each area engulfed in the Hollow Knight is beset by shadow-like creatures called Voids that utilize and feed upon a power known as Existence. Normal humans cannot see or come into contact with Voids, but certain people have the potential to perceive them. Those who acquire this perception are targeted by Voids and risk being either consumed by them or losing their sanity. Under special circumstances, a person who maintains their sanity after being attacked by a Void can become a being known as an Inbirth. It gets more complicated than that, obviously, but I think that's enough for us to have a better understanding of Ori's backstory. Where does she fit in all this? Well, Ori is an execution officer of the Leech Crees, an organization with their minds set on annihilating the Voids and maintaining the peace for mankind. Having lost her parents at a young age, she was raised within an institution of the organization. To repay her death to society and to ensure there are no more children who suffer the same fate she has, Ori takes a stand and fights. On orders of the Leech Chris, she travels to the metropolis to investigate the large surge in inbirds and the movements of the ever-expanding Amnesia, a rival organization. All the while, she also searches for the Void who speaks, the creature responsible for her parents' deaths. Ori is a kind-hearted young woman with a strong sense of justice. Having been rescued and trained to be able to fight voids, she's extremely loyal to the Leech Kreese and fights to uphold the peace and order that it brings to the world. Although Ori does not doubt the intentions of the organization, she can't help but feel that Leech Kreese may not be as noble as she believed due to the extremely questionable actions of some of her fellow members, particularly Erika. 
When Ari became an executor, she was given a raper called the Garden of Law and Order, the Ruler, which she currently uses as a weapon. Her ability Thanatos makes it possible for Arya to materialize a spirit from the ruler and control it like an avatar. So let's talk gameplay now. Ari is a rushdown character with very fast attacks to pressure the opponent and an excellent poking or footsies arsenal of normals thanks to her rapier. Although she lacks a fireball, she otherwise fits the Shoto stereotype, possessing the standard anti-air and expansion move scheme. Her command order and ceiling hoplum, not unlike many avatar characters in fighting games in the past, provides her a ton of combo opportunities and disjointed zoning and nokizeme, all of it with little cost. She also has a decent mix-up game with an overhead and a low attack, both of which come out pretty quick. However, Ori's notable weakness is her low damage to offset her well-rounded moveset, exacerbated further by her lack of full-screen zoning, which requires her to often do most of her work in close range. Those disadvantages don't hold her down too much though, as Ori usually sits around the mid to high part of most tier lists, making her a viable option for tournament play. And with that, we have now covered 4 fighting game fencers, or 5 depending on how you count those fellers from breakers. We've got 2 more to go in this list, both of them from classic old school 3D fighting game franchises. We start with the one whose series is in most dire need of a little public attention. It's Lancelot Lake Knight from Battle Arena Toshinden. Now, if you're not familiar with Toshinden, this weapons-based franchise was released during the late 90s for the Sony PlayStation, Sega Saturn, MS-DOS and Nintendo Game Boy of all places. You know, I always found those Game Boy adaptations of popular fighting games quite curious. Considering how little they had to work with, I often find myself impressed with what they were able to deliver. But I digress. Toshinden is one of the first fighting games to boost polygonal characters in a 3D environment featuring a sidestep maneuver which is often credited for taking the genre into true 3D. Each character has his or her own unique set of basic moves, special attacks and a desperation attack that can only be used when the player has low energy. The plot is simple, centering around the legendary Battle Arena Toshinden tournament, hosted by a mysterious organization known only as the Secret Society. Lancelot, who made his first and only appearance in the fourth game of the series, is a young English boy who is a champion fencer. One trait that he highly lacks, however, is courage. To tackle this, Lancelot looks up opponents' data and weak spots on the internet before their match begins in order to gain the upper hand. I fail to see how any of that is a sign of weakness, though. To me, it just sounds smart. Anyways, while Lancelot's father had taught him how to fence skillfully, he was displeased with his son's cowardice and thus sent him off to train every summer with Duke B. Rambert, the lord of a French castle. During one of those summers, Lancelot met a young girl carrying a legendary sword and decided to challenge her to a fencing match that he ultimately lost. The girl named Naru Amo revealed that she was searching for her missing foster father, Kain Amo, and had been told by Duke that Eiji Shinju, her father's best friend, may know where he was. Ever since then, Lancelot had admired Naru for both her fighting skills and courageous bravery. One day, Lancelot Lake Knight decided to enter the Fort Tushin Daibukai in hopes of getting a chance to see Naru again and challenge her for a rematch. As for how Lancelot plays, his attacks have long reach and fast speed. He excels at engaging from about middle range with powerful thrusts to pressure and assault his opponents. Sadly though, I couldn't gather enough data to tell you how he compares to the rest of the cast in a more competitive level. So, as usual, if any of you know this game better than I do, I'm all ears to hear what you have to say. Now, I only have one more character in this list, and it sure is someone special. I think it's safe to say that we've covered a variety of different fighting game fencers already. But what about one that doesn't fight with a sword? It's Yurika Kirishima from a series that is a personal favorite of mine. Rival Schools, only appearing in Project Justice, the second, and is still one explicably Dreamcast exclusive title, Eureka is a calm and timid young lady who is not the type of person to yell or make a fuss out of anything. She is musically gifted, being able to master just about any musical instrument, especially her trusty violin. 
Eureka's main weapon is actually her violin bow, which she uses to demonstrate her impressive fencing abilities, making her a truly unique case in this list. After the events of rival schools united by fate, Akira was transferred to Seijun High, leaving her without any friends. That is, until she found one in Eureka, who agreed to help Akira figure out what was happening with her brother, Daigo, who had been acting irrationally ever since he returned from his personal training journey. Unknown to both Akira and Zaki, who had joined them in their quest, Eureka was actually a conspirator from within her younger brother's evil plan to cause tension and distrust among the schools, with the ultimate goal of conquering Japan and the rest of the world by force. However, Eureka soon had a change of heart due to the friendship that she had formed with her teammates, switching sides and aiding Akira and her friends in saving and freeing Daigo from his brainwashing. Gameplay-wise, I don't really have much to tell you. Sadly, I have had very little hands-on time with this game, and none of it with Eureka. You know, Dreamcast exclusive and all. My research also didn't offer much in terms of help, but from what I could piece together, Eureka seems to be lacking in the ground department, but she excels at launching her opponents and follow them up with some of the best aerial combos in the game. As far as competitive gaming goes, Eureka sits comfortably in the second tier of characters, ahead of most of the cast, and only behind a very selected group of top tiers. So, that's my list of fighting game fencers. Which topic should I tackle next? Leave your suggestions below and don't be afraid to think outside the box. I'm itching for a good idea that doesn't involve fighting games, for example. I would also like to invite you to check out my real play RPG podcast, World Warrior, that uses the Street Fighter role playing game system created by White Wolf in the early 90s. I'll leave a link for that in the description. If you like what I do and want to see me do more stuff like this in the future, try to share this video with a friend or two if you can. The more people we can reach, the better. And if you're feeling super generous, you can also support me directly through Patreon at patreon.com slash So make sure to leave your opinions and suggestions below, and I'll see you guys later.